Aloha. Today we are taking your health back with me, Wendy Lowe. Mahalo to Think Tech Hawaii in downtown Honolulu for making these shows possible. I'd like to ask a question. Parents, who are responsible for teaching your keiki about sex education? Let's find out with Kahu Day Will Weber from Onipa'a, which is under the Ho'omalu Native Hawaiian Organization. Aloha and welcome, Kahu David. Aloha, Wendy. Mahalo for having me on. And I got to give you a warning. I get pretty fired up about this topic. Well, it's a very serious topic, and um, I can understand that you would get fired up. And I'm hoping the parents would get fired up enough to ask questions and seek further information from where they can, which is from you and your organization. So, Dave, please share with us what is Onipa'a and why is it needed? So, Onipa'a is uh, basically the teaching that we use, that we teach with. Um, we teach basically the framework that the best, healthiest, safest sex is found in the framework of lifelong loving marriage. And so immediately somebody might think, wow, that's old fashioned. And I would like to say uh, it's old as in it's tested, it's timeless and it's true. It's cross all culture and, uh, and it also is fashioned. And so I compare this with uh, kind of the big five of where kids get their information about sex these days, uh, TV, Hollywood, uh, social media, pornography, the school system, advertising. And you think about that messaging and what the keiki are receiving. And basically it's infatuation at first sight or worse, lust at first sight. Uh, the school systems teach uh, every Every student has a right to sexual pleasure. Um, I, I look at that and I think, wow, okay, pleasure is good in sex, but, but I also think about uh, our taste buds. Have we ever thought about uh, that we didn't necessarily have to have joy and enjoyment as we ate food? And so what if I would say I have a right to taste bud pleasure? Well, I know for me, it would lead to my death because uh, Long's the other day had a sale on the Halloween candy and I went and I got uh, a bag of Twix that were for $1.79 instead of $6.99, but I couldn't stop at one. So I grabbed about six and I, I polished off that whole uh, bag of 10 ounce Twix in one day. And if I, if I made my whole life about I have the right to taste bud pleasure, Oh my goodness, I would literally die from that. And and so you think about that and and there's more to food or t uh, eating than our taste bud pleasure. There's also nutrition, right? Which is way more important than the pleasure from it. So mm -hmm. if we take that same analogy over to a right to sexual pleasure, the same result can happen. So you look at those five that are coming against kids, giving a message about sexuality, and that's why we need the old and the fashion and the tried and the true, that there is a mobeta. And so onipa'a uh, is basically a Hawaiian word uh, made up of two Hawaiian words. And if we can see the logo, that would be really great because oni means a, a, a shaking or a shifting and pa'a means established, uh, steadfast, immovable in the midst of this shaking and shifting. And so only pa'a exists to bring a huli, a flip to the counterfeit sex narrative that's found in the big five, because we want optimal sexual health for kids. And that is found in lifelong, loving, healthy marriage. Wow. Okay. And then you did that all in one breath. That is amazing. The analogy that you gave me and everyone listening about the, the sugar and the abuse of what we can do to our body if we just, if there were no rules or guidelines. And so I, I'm understanding a little bit more about Onipa'a right now. And I love the correlation right there and very relatable. So 
Here we want to visualize a photo of a tea leaf in the next slide. What does this represent, Dave? So when Sister Kanaka Wahine sent this to me, and uh, she was really concerned because if you look really carefully, there's a peely vine that's going around the keiki and the parent tea leaves. So the tea leaves is, when I look at it, it's like an ohana, generations of an ohana. Like the outsides of it is the kupuna, and they're, they've been around the longest and therefore are growing outward. And then comes the parent leaves and they come outward. And then lastly come the keiki on the inside. But you can see that peely vine wrapped itself around um, the parent and the keiki tea leaves. And the end result of this will be death, not only for the keiki and the parent, but also as the kupuna die. Basically, it's the end of the generation of that tea leaf. Wow. Again, are you a teacher or what? That is a great analogy. I'm learning so much. And I mean, we see tea leaves all over, but now we'll look at it differently because it represents life and the quality of life or the quality of life that we don't have. So Dave, do you mean to tell me that our keiki are being choked out? Well, that was the interpretation of this uh, sister who sent this to me. She right. she said the uh, Aina is speaking to us. And so I reflected on her comment that the Aina is speaking, that the keikis are being choked. And as I reflected, um, there's an attack on the keiki, as, as well as all of us humans, and it's an attack on identity in at least eight ways that I identified, uh, seven ways I identified. Ohana identity, ethnic identity, biological sex identity, cultural identity, spiritual identity, human identity, national identity. And by national, I include Hawaii ne and America in that. And so I look at this and I would like each person to pause the screen and look at that image and, and ponder how are their attacks on each of those identities. I was recently around 25 individuals, uh, fairly Akamai people, and we spent 20 minutes talking about various attacks, and we only got through the fifth one, <laughs> and we had to move on because time was so short. But we had listed about 30 attacks. So I'm just going to give you one. Um, for a child, um, think about divorce. So if there is tension between the biological dad and the biological mom, that tension is experienced at a gut level with the keiki. Because what we teach and what the body teaches is that 23 chromosomes came from the the dad and 23 chromosomes came from the mom. So if that child sees tension and conflict or divorce or an absent father, that child is going to experience that acutely right in their gut. And, and it doesn't feel good. And so our keiki today need to be pa'a in the midst of oni, but pa'a knowing that that marriage is the best for all sexuality and the best um, for emotional satisfaction in terms of relationships. I don't want to knock our singles, but the studies are showing that what's best for uh, sexual satisfaction and emotional satisfaction is lifelong loving marriage. Singles can have emotional satisfaction in their relationships and in communities. And that is very important for society and them. For our kids, what's happening is that that marriage is being ripped out of the messaging of, of sex and sexuality. So think of those big five. How much do they focus on marriage? Like I'll, I'll ask the kids, when's the last time you saw a baby born in, in porn? or you saw a married couple with porn, and I am not encouraging them to look at porn, but the statistics are showing that, that kids will see 
uh, porn by the age of 11. For me, it was age seven or eight. And so this messaging is getting into their minds and their brains. And so our teaching is actually establishing the kids in their identity. So take, for example, the, the human identity that's under attack. Um, I'll, I'll tell the kids, I don't ever want to hear you call one another person one loser. And then I'll quickly talk about that, that when uh, the reproductive system comes together, and what's the only way that the reproductive system comes together naturally? What do you need? You need a biological male and you need a biological female. That's the only way. So already that's validating their biological sex identity. But when you bring those two together, there, there's a fluid exchange. And in the fluid exchange, there are 150 million sperm that are off to the races looking for that one uh, egg that the female brings to the equation. And so I tell the kids, wait a second, you are not one loser. There were 149,999,999 losers, but you kids are the winners. And they get it and they, they feel validated in who they are. They are not some random chance. They are on purpose. They were a one in 150 million purpose. And then you start looking at the genetic possibilities of the 23 chromosomes and the 23 chromosomes. And they really are more of a one in a 70 trillion purpose. So these are just some things as you hear this teaching of what I would call sexual truth, which is based on reproduction. It's based on what the body is speaking. Kids become validated in their identity. They realize that they are important. And so that really leads to the third slide, which our goal is to set the keiki free. That's what we want for all keiki, all parents, all ohana, is to live freely and to thrive and to have sexual choices influence the whole lahui the whole community, the whole nation. And I, I remember growing up in the 80s that the, I was told uh, what happens in the bedroom does not impact anybody else. So let us do whatever we want in the bedroom. Is that really true? Well, what happens in the bedroom actually impacts everything. That's why this teaching today is and this the the only pa'a teaching is for everybody businesses schools families um because choices that happen inside the bedroom will impact others if we're taught a message of engage in sex like in porn or in the school system engage in sex but it doesn't mention marriage that means people are going to be bouncing from partner to partner to partner. What's that going to do for STDs? Well, how is that going to then impact the healthcare system? That's going to tax and labor the healthcare system. Um, what about mental health? Um, it's interesting. Safe sex is called condom contraception and consent. But tell me, what has condoms done for protecting the hearts? And so kids that buy into this message that they're told that, hey, you have a right to sexual pleasure, and they believe that message, and they follow the model that's in porn, their brains are locking in on that, their brains are being wired, and they're seeing dangerous uh, sexual behavior, and then they're hearing that they should go for it, that's going to affect their, their mental health and their emotional health. How is that going to tax uh, the healthcare system in terms of therapy and counseling and so forth. And then, of course, we, we see the results uh, in, in the prison system. And think about the prison system. I think the stat is that 90% uh, of those in prison do not know their uh, biological father or didn't have a biological father. They didn't know him. They obviously had a biological father. 
So that was a sexual choice that has impacted that keiki greatly. And then how does that impact society? Who's paying the bill for somebody to be in prison? So so with, with one uh, teaching of sexuality, it creates a burden for the individual, but also for the whole of society. With our teaching, it actually ends up being a blessing for the child, for the future marriage. Um, one stat that's kind of interesting is that married men make more money than single men. Married men uh, live longer and healthier lives with less hospital visits than do single men. So we can see statistically uh, research showing that there is a mobetta when it comes to sexuality. Keeping it within lifelong loving, healthy marriage really is the best. And so that's really should what should be taught in the big five. How come it's not? Right. I get it. I mean, I'm with Kamagapi kids all the time. I'm with the kids on the street all the time. And yes, that's a major problem that we hear always. And um, that's the saddest. And we as adults have to look at all of that, you know, even more seriously when we fall in love. And so that's the problem is that they fall in love and you don't fall in love. You know, it's, <laughs> but but we'll get into that another time. We fall so, into infatuation or we yes. fall into lust. You yes. don't fall into love. That takes exactly. months and years to get to know somebody well enough, the whole person. So that's why the big five doesn't convey real love. But we do. One of the things we look at is distinguishing, discerning, being maka'ala, eyes awake, about the difference between infatuation, lust, and love. Go ahead. So what do the youth have to say about Onipa? Uh, that's the fun part. We've we've got uh, feedback from them from each teaching. Uh, I love what this female, age 13, said. Onipa'a helped me realize the importance of sex and made me change my choices to not engage in sexual activities before marriage. And then how about this male, age 17? This program taught me not only about the deeper reality behind sex, but also life. So this is way bigger than sex education, what we teach. We're teaching about their future. We're te talking about relationships. We're, we're talking about success. And then the, the male said, it taught me to think before doing. It was educational, fun, and life-changing, decision-changing. I think you can tell by listening to me, we do have a lot of fun in those classes. We tell great <laughs> stories. So how about, a, so how, how about another male? Age 18, I feel Onipa'a gives you a better understanding and depth than you would actually receive from school or elsewhere, the other big four. For example, this youth says, pleasure is less important than the target of marriage for sex. This feels more genuine and gives you second thought to what is actually a good thing for your future. Pretty articulate from these two males. Uh, right. And keep in mind, these are bus up kids that I got these <laughs> uh, this feedback from. Uh, these were kids that were actually sexually active before they got to the teaching. So this is a shame-free uh, teaching. In fact, the curriculum that we use uh, was designed by a lady who was running a uh, crisis pregnancy center. So... Mm -hmm the girls that were pregnant were coming to her and and her heart was breaking because the, the girls' hearts were breaking. And after helping them over and over and over, she said, I have got to write a curriculum. So the curriculum is highly, highly sensitive for kids that are already sexually active. And instead of dealing with the past, which would bring shame, we talk about today. Their choices today and looking at their future. What is your best optimal sexual health today in relationships and protecting your heart, protecting your future? And we look at all of that. And that's why any kid, no matter what their past is, or any adult for that matter, can look at 
today and what are my best decisions that I can make for myself, for my family, for my future possible spouse, for my future possible kids, generations, and what is going to get me on track and ultimately making decisions to avoid risky behavior. And the solution is not condoms. <laughs> the solution is waiting, delaying for lifelong marriage. Every kid and every adult deserves to have that message. And so I'm going to read the last uh, comment that that one female writes. Uh, she said of the teachers, they helped me make myself believe I can wait for sex. Whoa, just ponder that for a second. Wow. They helped me. The teachers helped me make myself believe I can wait for sex. I would recommend this program so others can understand why sex is important and how you can have the real safe sex, which is in marriage. And so I like to say that the big five is really counterfeit. It's, it's, it's giving a very shallow message about sex. It's making it basically purely physical. And so kids that come to our teaching, they're hungry for something that's real. And you can see it in the kids' comments that they're hungry for sexual truth and they have the capacity to get it here and here and in their na'au and they can know what's best for them and their, their, their decisions. Wow. I mean, <laughs> I wish I was a kid again and I could attend your class. I know you have them for parents as well. But yes, the children, the, the keiki are hungry for the proper guidance. And, you know, it's not the parents' fault because maybe they didn't get the proper guidance and knowledge and education. So Onipa is quite crucial to the success of the keiki's uh, futures. And I'm I'm just praying that more and more We'll learn about your programs and that's why i needed you be on this show today so that we can get the message out that there is somebody who cares and somebody that can make this learning fun and exciting that they receive it when they receive it they'll practice it and so that is the the, the goal right now so now i want to hear what do parents say about your onipa program very good well most I'll start with one parent, and then we'll go to most parents. Uh, I love this comment from one parent who sat in on the class. She said, Uncle Dave and Auntie Miley led the young adults to conclude on their own that sex is best done in a lifelong loving marriage within the first three hours and we teach for eight hours. So I love that comment because it's not like we're telling the kids how to think, we're engaging them. It's an interactive uh, discussion that lasts for eight hours. And, and most of these kids are like, oh darn, can't we meet more? Because it is so, it makes sense of life and it makes sense of relationships and it makes sense of their bodies. The girls especially are touched and they are the most vulnerable by the big, uh, by the big five, um, girls are way more vulnerable for STDs. And so girls that come through our teaching, they realize, whoa, my body is important. I'm important. I need to care for my body. And, and most parents uh, have the same response that you did, Wendy. Namely, I wish I had this when I was young. And, and <laughs> That basically, all of our teachers say, yes, we wish we did too. So basically, a couple things I want to tell about Onipa. We view uh, parents as the primary educators for their children. The, they're not our children. So we view our role as coming alongside the parents. It's ultimately the parents' kuleana to teach and educate the, their kids about uh, sexuality. But I know there's a lot of reasons why parents don't do it. When parents don't do it, that means the kids are going to be taught sexuality by the big five. And mm -hmm. I don't think we're going to be happy with the result. And so we want to come alongside the parent. What we like to do, and we've learned this, is we want to educate the parent before uh, the child. We want, we want the parent to vet us 
We don't want the parent to say, oh, well, I heard about Dave from this person or this auntie. No, don't trust anybody when it comes to this matter of sexuality. It's like literally life changing uh, and can lead to death or life. We want parents to vet us. That's your kuleana. So before any of uh, your children you send to our teaching, we want to engage you and we want you to vet us, learn about the, the teaching so that you can decide. And I know the time is short. Can we hit the, the benefits? Yes. So I just want, I'm, yeah, we have like a minute left. So what are just, give me one or a real short benefit of the Onipa'a program and what is some of your teaching content? Excellent. Well, it's right there on that slide and you can pause it. But, but basically this teaching will help anybody avoid regret. Um, but it's also hope for today. Uh, no matter what the past has been, the past shapes us, but it doesn't define us. Uh, this teaching, keeping all sexual, all sexual activity within lifelong loving marriage, it will lead to optimal total health and well-being. This teaching will help kids achieve future goals. Um, it will increase wealth and read that about the success sequence on your screen. It leads to better sex. Yes, lifelong loving marriage. You get really good at it. And I <laughs> intend on having sex into my 70s and 80s. That's what we want. That's what's good for society. Wow. Um, and then you can read the rest of this, but do contact me. We love, yes. we can teach this anywhere. We've taught it under a, a Ulu tree. We've taught it in a church sanctuary uh, on Molokai. Uh, we can teach it in classrooms. All back to you, sis. All right. So, yes, our time has come to a close for now. And you it's not like you're making or you're taking sex away. You're making it more fun and more rewarding when it's the right time. And so this is very valuable information. And to get excited about that, Dave, you share some very critical points on how we can guide our children towards a happier and more fulfilling life, as well as the adults. So mahalo. I am Wendy Lowe, and we will return in two weeks with another edition of Taking Your Health Back. Mahalo, Kahu Dave. Aloha.